You are looking at the Xpeng G6 which was launched in August this year. CBU from China, it's an EV SUV designed to go up against the likes of the Tesla Model Y which in itself is a relatively popular model here in Malaysia. But right off the bat, the Tesla has the advantage or rather subjective advantage of brand awareness and yes, access to the Tesla supercharger network. But the Xpeng counters with one massive advantage which I will reveal later on. So the question for today is this, if you're in the market for a large-ish EV SUV, should you go for the Tesla Model Y or is the Xpeng G6 your next perfect car? Let's find out. The Xpeng G6 is offered in two variants. There's the 580 Pro and the 755 Pro. And the numbers relate to its CLTC range in kilometers. Although, if I were you, I would look at the more realistic WLTP figures instead. Moving on, everything else is identical. So the major difference comes down to just the powertrain. And speaking of identical, the Xpeng G6 measures just several millimeters in terms of dimension difference against the Model Y in every direction, including wheelbase. So it really doesn't matter which variant you opt for, it looks the same with the same amount of kit. Now overall, design-wise, I think it looks a bit bulbous, but still very modern and definitely quite eye-catching on the road. The razor-thin LED headlamps to the flush door handles, to the 20-inch wheels wrapped in 255-45 tyres, to the full-width LED taillights at the back. It's all very much what you expect to come on a modern EV. And all in all, yeah, I would say it looks like a decent car. It's not too bold, but at the same time, not too boring. It's good. Pop open the electric tailgate, and we get 571 litres of boot space, which is enough for the usual 20 and 24-inch pair of suitcases to go in. Might want to be aware that the load lip can be pretty high but still nowhere near as big as the 850 plus liters that you get in the tesla model y and if you need more space you can always fold down the 60 40 seats for 1374 liters of space which is decent more than decent but still nowhere close to the 2000 plus liters that you get in the model y and that is before we even get to the fact that the model y has a frunk while the G6 doesn't. Step inside and there's no starter button. I mean, there's a key fob, but you don't even need it to get inside the car. Just have it linked up to an app on your phone and you can control pretty much everything from there. So, all in all, first impressions, it's very much like a Tesla, it's very minimalist, but in the case of the x you still get a 10.2 inch digital cluster, so you can, you know, get vital information a lot quicker. You can see your speed, you can see tire pressure, your range and whatnot. But there's also this cool VR assistant function whereby the car can show you cars, motorcycles, people and even traffic cones within your vicinity. And then we come to the steering wheel and frankly, I don't like it. The spokes are way too thick. You can't grab it properly at 9 and 3 unless you have gorilla hands. And when it comes to adjusting the side mirrors, you have to toggle the adjustment menu on the screen and then adjust said mirrors using these buttons and scrollers on the wheel. Yes, you can save your settings, but come on, it's not user-friendly at all. Then we come to the near as makes no difference 15-inch touchscreen, which is all good. It's very clear, it's very crisp, it's very fluid. And then you look below and you go, oh no, no buttons for the AC and the radio. So, yep, everything is controlled via the screen. Not a fan of it, to be honest. I'm sure most of you would know that by now. And yes, you can adjust it using voice assistant, but my hit rate with it personally is about 50-50. And I really do mean nearly everything is controlled via the touchscreen, from the reading lights, even down to where the aircon blowers are supposed to blow the air. It's very much like a Tesla, and again, I don't like it. Okay, there's no other way to put it. But there is a saving grace. So, the buttons on the spoke of the steering wheel, the left one, you can control the aircon blower speed and the temperature, and on the right, you can manipulate the audio volume as well. 
Now, the reading lights still can be triggered here physically, but you have to really swipe and sometimes more often than not, as you can see, it's not necessarily going to turn on on the first try. So yeah, this is, this is a, uh, it's a bit of an issue. Now, what's wrong with just having physical buttons like at the back? Okay, major plus point is that you get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And while I'm no audio expert, the 18 speaker X Opera sound system sounds decent enough. And if you go into the menus, there's even a driver setting for the audio system where all the chimes and the audios are pretty much channeled via the headrest in the driver's seat. So, you know, if you're alone or if your passengers don't want to hear any of it, it's all good. And moving on, if you look above, there's a massive glass roof with no sunshade. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's gonna get really, really hot, right? So x claims that it's been able to filter out harmful rays and after parking the car under the sun for about an hour and a half, two hours, yeah, I, I would say I would agree with them. Now, another pretty cool feature I'd like to highlight is the mindfulness space feature. So if you click it and activate, it pretty much turns the whole car into sort of a pseudo zen room for you to just relax. And then if you want to take it a step further, there's even the sleep space function, which essentially, I would say, turns the car into a bedroom. But you will actually need dedicated mattress for that to happen. So yeah. So as for storage spaces and amenities, let's see. Uh, along the door handles, we've got cutouts, which can fit an access card or a touch and go card nicely. It's a bit narrow, so just be mindful of that. And then down below, uh, we can fit a 300 ml water bottle easily but because it's a bit shallow if you were to use a slightly taller or larger water bottle just you know be on the lookout it might not fit all that well and then moving on to the center let's see we've got two wireless chargers one for the driver one for the front passenger so that's good down below there is a felt lined tray to put you know your wallets cards whatever else belongings we've got two usb ports right here one c one a and of course a 12 volt socket and then behind the wireless charger, we've got two cup holders. Yeah, fits, I guess, a small water bottle easily. And then you open up the center armrest and you get a huge, huge storage space inside. It's so big, you could probably fit a small handbag inside, which is all the better considering that there is no glove box. Okay, moving on to the back seats as usual. Front seat is adjusted to my driving position. I'm 184 centimeters tall for reference. And I have two, yum yum, two tennis balls worth of leg room. And one, one and a bit, one and a half tennis balls worth of head room. So all in all, okay, not too bad. We've got a fair bit of space. Uh, you can also recline the seats further back if you want to relax on longer journeys so that's nice and also we get a completely flat floor so the one sitting in the middle isn't going to feel short chain there's also i wouldn't say a lot there's a decent amount of room for me to slide my feet underneath the seats and the floor doesn't feel awkwardly high as it would be in most evs for me so all in all not too bad okay what about storage spaces and amenities so first things first we've got two seat pockets it's good uh the same narrow cutouts near the handle again enough for a cart but you know we've on the narrow side and then down below the door bins they can fit a small water bottle but much like the front ones they are actually quite shallow so if you're using a much taller bottle just be mindful of that and then drop the armrest and out pops two cup holders now one thing i note about the armrest though if you are leaned back just uh, take into account that your elbows are going to be slightly off balance. Okay, on the move. So let's get the tech specs out of the way first. So we have with us today the long range version, which means a battery size of 87.5 kilowatt hour, which gives us a claimed WLTP range of 570 kilometers. Now it's a single motor setup on the rear axle and it puts out 286 horsepowers and 440 newton meters of torque for 0 to 100 time of 6.2 seconds. Right then, charging speeds. Uh, AC charging at up to 11 kilowatt takes nine and a half hours for a full charge. DC charging at 280 kilowatts 
takes about 20 minutes to go from 10 to 80% state of charge. Okay, so numbers out of the way, how does it drive in the real world? First off, at city speeds, it's a decent, pretty comfortable city car. The power delivery is not as violent as some EVs would uh, have you believe. It's actually all very smooth and very manageable, which is great, especially if it's your first time transiting over to an EV vehicle. Suspension setup. All right, up front we've got double wishbones at the rear, multi-links, and all this combines to give a very, as I've mentioned, a very fairly client comfortable ride at city speeds, okay? It's, we have 20 inch wheels, mind you, okay? Keep that in mind, 20 inch wheels, and going over potholes, going over rough surfaces, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't really upset the car. You still feel some of the jolts, but again, given the fact it's 20 inch wheel setup, it's acceptable. Then you get up to highway speeds and the car becomes a bit of a handful. Handling wise, it's not its happiest when you're throwing it around corners. You can really feel the weight shifting about. All in all, it's not, I'll be fair, it's not the most planted and not the most confidence inspiring setup. The steering is also quite big. Even in sports mode, there's a little bit more feedback, a little bit more weight and resistance to it, but all in all, it's a very big experience. Uh, what else? Speaking of drive modes, yes. This, you can change the drive modes via the voice assistant, which in a way is a plus point compared to having to scroll around the screen while you're on the move, but still nowhere as good as having an actual physical button. So to sum it all up in terms of what it feels like to drive, I would say it is a decent cruiser at best, okay? Don't go throwing it around corners and you'll be fairly happy with the product. In terms of refinement, we've got double glazed front windows, only the front windows though. And according to Wapcar's own instrumental testing, we recorded a reading of 69 decibels at 110 kilometers per hour. Now, in terms of safety and ADAS features, there's the X-Pilot 2.5 suite, which in terms of hardware features five millimeter wave radars, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and 12 cameras. As for features, there's plenty with ACC, lane sentiment control, active turning cruise, and active lane change. And all this combines to provide a much higher level of semi-autonomous driving. And, uh, this is a bit weird here, you trigger the ACC by actually pulling down on the gear selector once. And then, subsequently, only do you adjust the speed limit and the distance of the car in front of you, you know, the usual parameters, via the buttons on the left spoke. Also, Special mention goes out to the remote parking assist feature which allows you to maneuver the car in and out of tight spaces via the app on the smartphone. And all in all, do remember this. All these features come as standard on the x G6 whereas in the case of Tesla, you will be required to fork out quite a fair bit of cash more for similar features. And speaking of topping up more cash for the Tesla, Remember how earlier on I said that the x will counter with one massive advantage? Yep, you guessed it. It's the price. So the x G6 starts off at 166,000 ringgit and goes up to 186,000 ringgit for the long range model you see here, while the Tesla Model Y kicks off at 191,000 ringgit and goes all the way up to 280,000 ringgit. Now, if you want to talk about performance, the base Model Y is pretty much the same as this, while you're gonna have to cough up a lot more money for the long range all wheel drive variants and beyond. Plus, you have to pay even extra cash if you want things such as a different color, autopilot, and even a key fob. So from the looks of it, it's a bit of a no brainer really. Unless you have your sights set on a Tesla, if you're after a relatively large EV SUV that doesn't cost a bomb, then the x G6 is indeed your next perfect car. And on that note, I think it's time we call it a day. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to comment, subscribe, every little bit of support, we appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Drive safe, take care.